All right, welcome officially to the brand new Scrambler 1100. I believe this is actually, according to my email logs, the most anticipated model of the year for Ducati. I know the V4 is out, I know that's super hot and stuff, but uh, I bet you I have at least 10 times as many leads for this bike as I do for the V4. So let me give you the usual brochure stuff right of the box. It is a vaguely 1100cc motorcycle, weighs about 460 pounds with fuel. The vast majority of the Scrambler lineup sits on the 803cc air-cooled motor. And I'm delighted to say that this motor is making a comeback even though it's Euro 4 compliant. And even though this is Euro 4 compliant, it's got some snot. Now the problem with air-cooled bikes is that it's very difficult to maintain an optimum temperature on them as they don't have any fans or radiators or coolant. Before we get too far to the lifestyle hipster and technical stuff part of the bike, one thing you should know that if you just look at the horsepower number, it doesn't look too impressive. If you look at the torque number, it looks okay. However, if you read the next line after the torque number, you see what RPM it's at. And that's the most important thing about this bike to me is that it makes peak torque at 4700 RPM. In case you're curious, the 959 doesn't do that and the Panigale V4 just does it. So this bike has just about as much torque at 4700 RPM as the Panigale V4. That's just something you won't find on the internet elsewhere. That's, that's why you subscribe to DSG, which you should do and follow on Instagram at Ducati Sales Guy, all one word. Now today I donned my second most retro jacket because I believe this is a retro looking bike and despite the old air cooled lump, it is quite modern underneath. There's a lot of modern bike giveaways to me. Not the way it looks, not the equipment sheet. What I noticed is that it's uh... Oh, that sounds so good. Oh, that sounds amazing out of the box. I don't know if you can hear that, but let me get my helmet down here, but uh... There's induction noise. I don't know if it's the raging, decrepit old man in me. I just feel like I'm back on a motorcycle again. My favorite bike is still the Multistrata, which is an amazing expression of what the perfect motorcycle can be. Whereas this bike, it's, it's like a refined version of a bare bones old school motorcycle. It has the old school motor, the old school induction noise, but decent suspension, brilliant brakes, and just so many nice refinements like ride by wire. It's got ABS, it's got trash control, it's got loads, and I've never felt such a light hydraulic clutch before in my life. It's so easy to use. It feels feather light when you're moving. It's got so much torque at the bottom. No matter what RPM you're at, it just picks up and goes. It's fantastic. Yeah, I, I kind of, this is not what I was expecting when I got on this motorcycle, I'll tell you that much. I was expecting more just the Scrambler 800 that with a bigger motor. What we got is a more refined version of the Monster 1000 or 1100 if you've ever ridden one of those. Those were badass bikes. That sounds so good! How does it sound so good out of the box? What is this? What is this Italian sorcery I'm sitting on? The reason I think it feels like a monster to me is because of the steering. The Scrambler 800 is very light and flickable, but almost feels flighty on the front end. But for some reason, this one, when I'm in a corner, it doesn't want to come back up. It, it almost feels like a sport bike. That is what sort of forced me to rethink what this bike is, and that's what's kind of confusing me a little out of the box, is that I thought this was going to be a bigger Scrambler. I think what it actually is is like a retro sport bike of all things. When you combine it with the upright handlebars and the kind of flat track style seat, you think this is more Scrambler. But riding it for some reason, this is more Monster 1100 Evo from 2013 than anything to me and I'm suddenly getting all these old man memory flashbacks and, and reluctant directions and I don't know, this is, this is definitely not what I was thinking it would be. Now before I completely cover both myself and the bike in goo, there is two things I'm sort of unsure about, let's say. First, that. But the second and critically most important thing, which I'm unsure about, the most aggressive mode is called active, which I like because I'm going to actively pursue some sport bikes on this motorcycle. There's also a city mode, which makes sense because I'm going to ride this in the city. However, there is also a journey mode if you look very closely. The nomenclature on that particular boat sounds a little bit too much like some 20 year old hipster chick on her life's journey. So you lose some points for me there on that one, duckety. 
Good job otherwise though. This bike f***ing rocks. Alright, moving on. On to the boring review kind of stuff. Ergonomics. It has some of those. Yep. I'm about 6'1 and I fit quite comfortably on this bike. So far the seats, the seat's kind of stiff. But uh, luckily I'm quite fat so my ass will probably break it in quite nicely over the next 2000k. So I'm going to put some corny editing and music into this next section and then we'll check back in 15 seconds, let's say. Cool. Yeah. See you then. I think of the DSG. So is it good at chasing down sport bikes? Yeah, it's not bad at the right hands. Is it comfortable? Absolutely. Is it the most well-equipped bike? No, it's got stuff on it. It's just it doesn't have cruise control, heated grips, all the modern things you'd expect from a touring bike, but not necessarily a city bike. But what it is brilliant at is taking the girlfriend for ice cream, running around town, running out to the mountains and back, short trips, scrambling, So ultimately, you buy this bike because you want to have a damn good time and you want a premium motorcycle doing it. Come check it out with your local DSG, even if you are from across the pond, I promise I'm worth the trip in. Probably. DSG out.